welcome everybody. Thanks for uh, coming out today to, um, to hear about uh, what, what the next step is in the uh, situation regarding the termination of Chief Cochran. I'm not going to go on too long. I understand it's 3 o'clock. It's not really a great time. You, you have 4 and 5, uh, five o'clock um, uh, broadcasts and you need to uh, get in and out of here. So I do apologize for the 3 o'clock timing. Uh, it, it was weather, travel schedules, and other things that uh, forced us inside for this. So um, most of you, uh, has anybody not gotten a copy of the release that needs one? OK, good. You'll see up, at the uh, up across the top of the release in the header a website. It's adfmedia.org. At that website, you can get all the documents related to the federal civil rights lawsuit that we are filing, uh, that Alliance Defending Freedom is filing on behalf of uh, Chief Cochran. Uh, you're going to hear two speakers today. One is David Cortman, who leads the, uh, in the litigation department at Alliance Defending Freedom, who is representing uh, Chief Kelvin Cochran. And you're going to hear from uh, uh, former Atlanta Fire Chief um, uh, Kelvin Cochran himself. Following that, there will be a question and answer period uh, that uh, Dave Cortman will uh, Dave Cortman will lead. Unfortunately, uh, the nature of things when you're dealing with federal uh, uh, federal litigation, uh, the client uh, typically doesn't speak, and that's going to be the case here. So uh, Chief Cochran will deliver his remarks. Uh, but then following that, he won't be, um, he won't be participating in the Q&A. And for right now, he's not going to be participating in any one-on-one um, uh, -on -one, uh, individual uh, media interviews. So I hope that uh, what you hear here is valuable and um, that um, it gives you, uh, gives you what you need to um, uh, uh, put out some good stories tonight. So I am going to, um, uh, let me also introduce, aside from uh, Dave Portman and, um, and Chief Cochran, uh, Garland Hunt and Jonathan Crumley. Uh, they are also attorneys on the team representing uh, Chief Cochran. So I'm going to turn it over to David Portman. Good afternoon. <clears throat> I have about a four or five minute uh, statement for you. And then as uh, Greg mentioned, the Chief will speak for a few minutes, and then we'll open it up to uh, any Q&A. Kelvin Cochran is one of the most decorated firefighters of our day. Despite growing up as one of six children raised by a single mom in extreme poverty, he achieved his childhood dream of becoming a firefighter, even to the highest post that one can achieve in that profession. He was named Atlanta's fire chief in 2008. He fired Cochran solely because he holds religious beliefs shared by millions of people, not only in his Christian faith, but of differing faiths that are contrary to the mayor and the city's views. And because he expressed those beliefs in a religious book that he self-published. <laughs> One of the city councilmen who was involved in the campaign to oust the chief stated, and I quote, those who have thoughts, beliefs, and opinions who are employed by the city need to check them at the door. That should be a startling statement to all of us. And Mayor Reed has been quoted repeatedly making clear that Cochran's Christian beliefs were not welcome in his administration. As you may have heard, the city has stated several pretexts for firing the chief. For example, that after 34 years of distinguished service, he suddenly lacks the judgment and integrity to lead a diverse department. But it is not the chief who has a problem with diversity, it is the mayor and the city, who is apparently the new definition of diversity for them includes only those who agree with their point of view. Or somehow that he should have received permission from the mayor to publish his book based on some newly invented non-existent policy, one that is not in writing and has never been applied before, and one that the Constitution wouldn't allow regardless. The city's newly invented pretexts are little more than cover for its unlawful deeds. The city's actions put every city employee at risk of punishment up to and including termination simply for expressing beliefs that may differ from the city's. But Americans are guaranteed the freedom to live without fear of being fired because of their beliefs and their thoughts. The city of Atlanta is not above the Constitution and is not above federal law. And in America, a religious test cannot be used to fire a public servant. The government cannot force citizens to convert to another belief system or remain silent about their beliefs to be employed. For these reasons, Alliance Defending Freedom, along with Garland Hunt and Jonathan Crumley, just a few moments ago, filed a federal civil rights lawsuit on behalf of Kelvin Cochran against the city and against the mayor. 
in order to protect not only his constitutional rights, but everyone else's constitutional rights of free speech and free exercise of religion. Thank you. Good afternoon, everyone. I'm Kelvin Cochran, the immediate past fire chief for the City of Atlanta Fire and Rescue Department. I want to start by expressing my gratitude to the supporters that are here uh, and to those who are not here but who have been supporting and praying for me uh, during this entire uh, ordeal. Uh, I also want to thank uh, my friends and supporters from the Georgia State Capitol uh, and those of you who are here from the media, thank you uh, for your continued coverage of this story in a very balanced and equitable way. Uh, it is no secret that my life in public service has been on public display for the last several months. And as all of you are aware, I, I was suspended without pay for 30 days and subsequently fired after 34 years of faithful service in the fire and emergency services industry. Many of those years were served right here faithfully in the city of Atlanta, the majority of which under the leadership of the Honorable Mayor Kasim Reed, a man that I continue to respect. In our faith, Jesus Christ commands that his followers give themselves fully to, loving, to a loving God and to loving every person without condition and without exception. In the fire service, I have had the privilege to demonstrate this virtue every single day for the last 34 years. It has been my mission to treat everyone in the communities of which I've served and the members of the departments of which I have served with dignity, respect, and with equity. My work record for the past 34 years and within the city of Atlanta, that speaks for itself. Not only do I have or value every person of whom I have served, uh, over my career and even today, I would gladly lay down my life in service uh, to save another life in spite of their differences or their demographic because that's what firefighters do. The one thing we should not have to sacrifice is our God-given freedoms, the freedom of speech, and the freedom of religion. It was these freedoms for which so many in our nation's history and in the history of the city of Atlanta have sacrificed, suffered, and died, and that we shouldn't be forced to surrender. I was fired simply because of what I believed. Those who demanded that I be fired have said publicly and repeatedly that the long-held mainstream Christian beliefs expressed in my book should cost me my job. No American should live in fear of being fired because of what they believe. It's unjust and it is unconstitutional. So even while I continue to pray for the city of Atlanta, my hometown, the city that I love, and pray for the success of Mayor Kasim Reed in leading our city. And even though my childhood dream come true career has come to a conclusion for the time being, I cannot allow this unjust act towards me to go unchallenged. And I will not be passive and leave this fight for someone else. While I was fired for my faith, the same faith that caused my childhood dream to come true. It's ultimately not just about Kelvin Cochran. It's about the future of freedom of speech and freedom of religion in the United States of America. And that is why today uh, my attorneys, Jonathan Garland and the attorneys from the Alliance Defending Freedom and their team have filed a federal civil rights lawsuit on my behalf to vindicate the God-given freedoms every American is guaranteed on the United States Constitution and the federal law. This time, David Cortman will answer any questions that you might have. Mr. Cortman, do you have um, uh, perhaps a, a, a problem here? Is it problematic trying to pursue this given that 
uh, Kelvin Cochran was a appointee, and as a cabinet member, the mayor has uh, asserted that he has the right to to dismiss a cabinet member at any time. No, we don't, and and there's several reasons for that. Um, number one, uh, religious beliefs cannot be the basis for terminating uh, a public servant. And so even though that's certainly by appointment, uh, there cannot be illegal or unconstitutional reasons for letting someone go. And I think that's the problem that we have here. It has been made clear through all of the statements uh, made over the last several months by both the mayor and some of the council members that what the chief did wrong was to express his religious beliefs in a book written on his own time and self-published. And that is not a legal or constitutional reason uh, to fire someone. Let me, let me very quickly, I know there was a few of you that asked the difference between the Title VII complaint that was filed with the EEOC uh, and this. And so let me just take a second just to explain that. A, we filed a Title VII religious discrimination complaint. You may have heard back a few weeks ago. Uh, this is a federal lawsuit filed in federal court here in Atlanta. And the Title VII is only one of those claims which is based on a federal statute. The claims in this complaint are based on federal constitutional law. Once the Equal Employment Opportunity Commission issues what they call a right to sue letter, that one religious discrimination com uh, uh, cause of action under Title VII will be added to this complaint. So that's merely a separate action that's done through a federal statute. Uh, this is done through federal constitutional law uh, that's filed in federal court. Mr. 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 Crawford, the, the mayor has said repeatedly um, that he fired you for judgment rather than uh, your religious beliefs. Your response to that? Well, I'll respond to that. The, the city has stated publicly on, on many occasions uh, that the chief's beliefs uh, were the reason for uh, his firing. His judgment, as described, was the judgment of whether he should uh, write down what he believes in a book and publish that book. So while judgment can be an amorphous word, it specifically in this situation has to do with the judgment of expressing his uh, religious beliefs, which is certainly protected by the Constitution. What the city contends, though, and what the mayor contends is that uh, Chief Cochran was to go to the mayor's office prior to publishing the book, though. That's something that the mayor still says didn't happen. Uh, can you respond to that? I can. First of all, there is no written policy that anyone has to get permission uh, from the mayor to write a book. Uh, second of all, if there was such a policy and we have not seen it, it would be unconstitutional anyway. And third, I may add, uh, the mayor was aware of this book over a year ago and was actually given a copy of it. If there truly was a problem, that there was some policy that permission was not given ahead of time, you would think it would have been raised at that time. And yet it was not raised until nearly ten months later uh, when a few people complained about the contents of the book. What are you asking for in the lawsuit? Uh, we are asking for uh, several different types of relief. One of it is uh, reinstatement. Uh, one is uh, a, de a declaration, which is basically a finding that there was a constitutional violation here uh, based on his free speech and his freedom of religion uh, and to any uh, uh, back pay or front pay awards uh, that come from that. But the most important thing is a vindication of his constitutional rights, not only for him, but for every other city employee. Think about how dangerous of a concept this is that someone could be fired because their religious beliefs differ from the city's. Everybody should be concerned about that. If you work for a city government or any other government for that matter and you were told you must check your beliefs at the door if they don't 100 percent line up with the city that is dangerous for every government employee across the country. What do you believe the underlying issue is here? Um, because if you say the mayor had a copy of this book well in advance there's no policy. Is this some sort of witch hunt? Or what, what do you believe the, the motivation here then is by the mayor to do such? Uh, ironically, it's, it's, I think it has to do with uh, the words bantied about uh, these days of, of diversity and tolerance. And what's interesting about that is, is, is tolerance is supposed to be a two-way street. What we see now, the definition of diversity and tolerance is, is we'll be diverse and we'll be tolerant if you agree with us. And I think that's what's at the basis and at the core here, is that someone expressed his beliefs that were differing from a few people that complained and maybe different from the mayor and the city. But that's not a reason to terminate him. And I think what's important to find is even the city's own investigation found that the conduct, the act of discrimination, was not found at all. 
The chief has served for 34 years, has not discriminated against anyone, and yet we hear about this non-discrimination policy when there was actually no discrimination at all at any time by the chief. But the city's investigation also found that the book was distributed without uh, those subordinates asking for it. That was seen as a policy violation. Well, again, um, several of the people that the book was passed out to did ask for, but the few that did not, again, there is no policy that prohibits handing out a book to someone in your workplace as a free gift, nor could there be. No one needs uh, any permission uh, except for the Constitution to hand a friend or a coworker a book, whether that be religious or otherwise. And so no one's forced to take a book. There's no policy that's violated. These are simply pretexts that are given for the core reason of the chief being fired for his beliefs. And I think that's what everyone should pay attention to. These policies that are popping up are no policies at all. They're not in writing, and even if they could be found somewhere, they violate the Constitution. No one needs permission from the mayor or anyone else uh, to engage in religious speech, especially when that speech is being written on his own time. Well, what about those employee civil the, rights not to be presented with that stuff in the workplace? That was sort of the basis of what the mayor felt uh, he needed to be fired for. There is no civil right not to be presented a book in the workplace. What the civil right is, is a First Amendment constitutional right to give someone a book in the workplace, and certainly that person has a right to say no thank you, and that certainly would have been abided by here. But every single person either asked for the book or willingly accepted it. So there's no violation, there's no forcing of any beliefs on anyone. No one had to take the book in the first place, and certainly no one had to read it. Mr. Corman, uh, in, 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 Mr. Corman, in the... Uh, no, we did not. Mr. Corman, uh, since uh, the Supreme Court decision to allow uh, gay marriages to proceed in Alabama uh, occurred, there's been a presumption among a lot of conservatives that they'll rule to uphold gay marriage uh, uh, by the end of the, their term uh, in June. Is, are, are we going to be seeing uh, conscience protection lawsuits like this one uh, spring up as the next phase in the discussion in gay marriage? I think we already are. In fact, there's been several situations across the country dealing with uh, photographers, florists, bakers. Uh, in fact, even in, in Idaho, uh, there was a minister performing marriage ceremonies that was threatened to have a, a quote-unquote non-discrimination law applied against them. So the short answer is yes, it's been happening already. It will continue to do so. And I think that's important because I think the type of laws that protect freedom of conscience and protect religious freedom are extremely important here because no one should be forced to violate their faith uh, in any of those uh, circumstances. And here, what's interesting is, is there was, again, no conduct that was done that was impermissible by the chief, uh, other than write a book that expressed his views that disagreed with those of the cities. Is there a statement you think being made here that, that the chief would be seeking uh, financially, uh, as I understand it, nothing other than uh, whatever pay he, he would have uh, lost in his career time? Yes, that's the that's the, the basis of it. But again, this was not brought for uh, monetary damages as the, the most important part of the case. In fact, when, when uh, the decision was made to go forward, it was really the chief standing for a principle. And, and unselfishly, not only caring about him, himself and his own career, but for everybody else. And not only here in Atlanta, who works for and is employed by the city, but across the country, because this sets a dangerous precedent. If you can say, I want to know everyone who works for any, any uh, level of government, we want to lay out your beliefs, and if any of those beliefs disagree with, the, with uh, the people who employ them, that they could be fired, I think that not only violates the Constitution, but a very dangerous precedent. Well, are you saying, are you saying, you just want to follow up, are you saying, based on what you know about this case, that the exposure to the taxpayers might be significant or not? Uh, it, it may be. It depends how the city responds. I mean, the city has so far fought tooth and nail. Depends what they do with the lawsuit. We're certainly ready to sit down and work this out right now and not cost the city any money at all. Uh, but it depends on what the mayor and the city decide to do with the case. Hey, Chief Cochran, uh, this is a question for you. Uh, LGBT, Chief is not taking any questions. But. LGBT advocates have talked about the chilling effect that the, uh, the what was actually the content of the, the book, uh, saying that gays and lesbians, it's a tight, it's a, the lifestyle is a, is a perversion. Can you respond to uh, that part of it, that any gay or lesbian person within the fire department after that, the contents of the book became public, that that would have a chilling effect on them, that that would affect their treatment within the fire department? 
Yeah, I can respond with the facts, and that is the chief has been uh, serving in this uh, capacity or similar capacity for 34 years, and there's not one shred of evidence or accusation of any discrimination against anyone from any group. So simply saying we have some fear for the future uh, simply uh, doesn't cut it. What we have here is, is a, a, a well-established record uh, for decades now of non-discrimination, and I think that's what we should look at. Where are things right now with the EEOC? What, what can you tell us about the, the three or four weeks they've had the complaint? Uh, the EEOC works on its own timeline, uh, and they can decide either to issue what's called the right to sue letter, which basically means that you could then include that uh, com that uh, cause of action in your complaint. Uh, they can close it. They can do their own investigation. So once you submit it to them, uh, it's completely up to them what the response is and the timeline for responding. So what we do is we file this federal lawsuit, and whenever uh, they issue that right to sue letter, that'll be added to the complaint at that time. But it's, they're under their own timeline. Thank you. All right. Thank you, everybody.